family, YouTube family, Auntie is here. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your Auntie of Pop Culture. I go by the nickname Ginger, and we love to start off with a hug. Was it a good weekend for you guys? I certainly hope it was. And if you watched the United States versus Billie Holiday on Hulu, because it's streaming now, Andra Day! Or Andra Day. She was a big winner last night at the Golden Globes. I am so happy for her. This is, I know my hair is all over the place. We're going to get it all, all fixed. This was her first acting role. You know, a lot of us know her from singing Rise Up. She won last night. What an accomplishment. First time in 35 years that a black woman won for Best Actress Golden Globe. It was Whoopi Goldberg, Color Purple. Because that same year, Color Purple didn't win anything at the Academy Awards. Whoopi Goldberg twice won Golden Globe. Best Actress, Best Supporting, uh, Color Purple, and then for the movie Ghost. It's been since 2007 that three people of color won um, all on the same night. What was interesting, because I told you guys about the Golden Globes, it's made up of the Hollywood Foreign Press, and there are no... African Americans in that foreign press. They said, we're going to change. But look how many people of color won. You had the Disney Pixar movie Soul picking up three. Jamie Foxx did the voice. You had Andrew Day. You had the late actress, actor, the late actor Chadwick Boseman. His wife Simone gave such a powerful speech. The tears, and you just you, you, you just, you just teared up because you so miss him and the talent that he had. But Chadwick won for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. John Boyega, who's from England, he won a Best Supporting TV show. Um, Daniel Kaluuya playing Chairman Fred Hampton for... Judas and a Black Messiah. He is from England. I know this is raging debate. Oh, why are all these English actors coming and they're like taking our awards? And it was it was a good night for Andra Day to win. My gosh. If you saw Billy Hall, if you saw this movie, you'll know what I mean. Because she just really embodied it. And for it to be her first acting role and again a Golden Globe. I just wonder. What is next for her? Now, two weeks from today, it's the nominations for the Academy Award. They always use the Golden Globes as kind of like a mirror of what you can possibly expect for the Academy Awards. I think we're going to be surprised by some of the things. The ceremony isn't until April because everything had to be moved back. But Golden Globes are kind of like a precursor to what we can expect. Next weekend, NBA All-Star Game with Gladys Knight. Singing the National Anthem. It's all taking place in Atlanta. Over the weekend, singer D'Angelo had his verses. Now, I forgot about it, so I had to watch it yesterday. D'Angelo looked interesting with this hat and this fur coat. Come to wind out, D'Angelo and friends, the audience were the friends, but he did have Method Man and Red Man out for one song. He did bring singer Her for one song. The DJ was slamming. But I am of the age, you got to show up on time. And he was like an hour late. And I said, that would have driven me nuts. Like the DJ was good. He was extremely entertaining. But I was like, well, what time is D'Angelo coming on? He, it was an interesting set. Let's put it like that. I hope that it's, it, it's, a um, he's going to come back and start touring, you know, possibly next year. But his verses was interesting. But if you watch the playback, like I did, and versus y'all got to fix this. Y'all, if y'all got too many sponsors not to keep doing this right, too many technical difficulties and glitches, and he's singing, but it didn't match the audio. And I was like, what's going on? Versus y'all got to get this together. I think this is why people are not getting excited over them, or they forget that they're coming on, but it was D'Angelo from the Apollo Theater. Tomorrow night, Soul of a Nation. It's a six-part series on ABC about the black experience. Sterling K. Brown from This Is Us is going to be hosting it each week. They're going to have different hosts. The black experience is more than just singing, dancing, and playing ball. It just encompasses 
everything. And it's a six part series. Never been done like this on a major network on this like magazine type, you know, thing. So they're pretty excited about it. Saturday Night Live, it's going on hiatus. But when it returns, Maya Rudolph is going to be stepping into the hosting role. Dawn Robinson from In Vogue. It was just last week I said, they ain't getting back together, y'all. Too much envy. Jealousy. Dawn is out here talking. She's going to write a book. Dawn saved some of it for the book. Now she's saying that Raphael Sadiq, who she worked with in Lucy Pearl back in 2000, they had this group called Lucy Pearl. She said Raphael Sadiq caused her to lose her home because of his bad financial business. Apparently, the group, I don't, she said, he didn't look out for me financially. You did kind of think that Lucy Pearl was going to be more than what it was, but I think it was just way too many egos in the way. Tonight, Biggie, I got a story to tell. It is streaming on Netflix. Never before seen footage and stories from his mom, from Puffy. They produced it. Biggie was so young when he died in 1997. He was only 24 years old. I know he's part of my top five of favorite MCs. But his mom, Valetta Wallace, tells a story how she found his drugs. And it was crack. Because Biggie, before he became famous, he was selling crack. She thought it was mashed potatoes. <laughs> Harpo! What kind of mashed potatoes were they? But she said she thought they were mashed potatoes. She threw them out and Biggie like had a fit. Just one of the many stories that you'll hear. But this documentary is airing now on Netflix. This Sunday, Oprah, Harry, Megan. Megan sitting there quietly in her $17,000 diamond bracelet from Princess Diana. The $3,000 Armani gown. And she's, you know, pregnant and holding on to her stomach. What are they going to say? Well, they're putting out clips. It airs Sunday at 8 o'clock on CBS. Harry said he didn't want to see a repeat of history. His mother didn't have to die in that car crash in Paris because a paparazzi was chasing her. Were they really mean to them? Is the queen like a like a gangster, my boss? Because they're very upset overseas and how they're being portrayed and what they're going to say. And they're only letting out snippets to make sure that you're watching Sunday night. They It went from 90 minutes to two hours. And I think we're going to be surprised at some of the things that come out of this special. Lady Gaga, the dogs have been found. You know, whoever... Took the dogs, shot the dog keeper. When they realized what they had, uh, were they French? Were they French bulldogs? I believe I believe French bulldogs. They knew they couldn't sell them because they would be caught. See, dog napping is real. Now, they were extreme shooting the dog on, you know, the dog walker. But if they had sold it, and they could have got a lot of money, but guess what? Whoever bought the dogs... Stole the dogs, they would have all got in trouble. A woman found the dogs, two of them, because one they were able to find. Um, tied up to a tree. The hunt is on. Who did this and who shot? Who shot that dog catcher? But thank God he is alive and the dogs are found. Emmanuel Acho is going to be replacing... Chris Harrison on The Bachelor, the After the Rose edition. Emmanuel has written a great book, Conversations or Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. He's a former NFL player. He used to play here with the Eagles. He was on Fox Sports 1 as an analyst. But he wrote this book last year that a lot of people were talking about. because, And he's from Nigeria. The uncomfortable conversation that often happens with race, and it often comes up time and time and time and time and time and time and time, and time again. Every time we think we got to talk about it, the next day, it just comes back. But he's written 
an amazing book and he's got a YouTube channel and you got to check out some of the interviews that he did. But what he wanted to do was open up dialogue for people who don't understand or who don't realize that racism is a real thing. And it's not like you're playing the race card, but racism is such a problem in this country. Interesting that he's going to be the host because I was hearing that Michael Strahan, who still might get it, they didn't say he was going to be the permanent host, but you know, you know, ABC is looking to get Michael Strahan another gig because um, he does Good Morning America, but he lost that third hour, so don't be surprised. I heard Robin Roberts, but I don't see Robin doing this. He's she's she's too busy, but Emmanuel Acho is going to be hosting that after the rose. Irv Cross, I got to end this by, by, by talking of him. He was a broadcast pioneering legend. He was a football player in the 60s. He played for the Eagles. He played for the Rams. But it was in the 70s when he stepped into the broadcast booth as the first black man to work, you know, sports full time for a major network. It was Irv Cross, Brent Musburger, Jimmy the Greek, Phyllis George, Jane Kennedy, Whatever incarnation they were, they just made a great team. And how ironic that in 2021, there are no women in that front booth. They're on the field and they're working, but in that booth with the fellas in 2021, but they did in the 70s, that just seems so, that just seems so crazy. But Herb Cross was a decent man because he was the first, you know, he went through a lot. He knew his sports and he was a nice man and he just opened the door for so many other men of color and people of color to come through those doors to do what he did. Passed away yesterday at the age of 81. He'd been battling Alzheimer's for a while, but we just remember and hats off to a true broadcasting pioneer in the form of Irv Cross. Tiny and T.I., this thing is getting worse, y'all. It's getting worse. More women are coming forward with stories. One woman said they made her sleep with Nelly. Hot in here, Nelly. It doesn't look good. They're not going to get that show back on VH1. And as more women come forward, it just gets deeper and deeper. And it, their careers, it really could be done for them because these allegations are serious. Beyonce's stand is going to leave the music business. He has a podcast on iHeartRadio entitled Matthew Knowles Impact. He says he wants to be a mentor to people, but he himself is getting out of the music industry. He loves podcasting. He is promising a lot of special guests. He says one week you could hear his ex-wife. Beyonce Knowles, the mother of Beyonce and Solange. Spike Lee is doing a project for HBO. You know he loves New York. Well, he's going to do one from 9-11 to today, documenting, documenting that time. you got to think, next year, 2021, it will be the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And his special is going to really focus on that time period from 9-11 until today. I went through comments and I'm going through them tonight. So reach out. I'm so doggone happy for Andrew Day. Ah, if you saw it, you know, like, please like, like leave a comment. Someone was saying with coming to America too, which starts streaming Friday on Amazon prime. Why does it have to be Amazon? Because they came up with the money. Trust me. Netflix wanted it. Hulu wanted it. Everybody wanted it, but Amazon came up with the money and they paid millions and they're doing massive promotions. But coming to America too, which looks so good, it starts streaming on Amazon Prime on Friday. I had a lot of stuff today. Give us a thumbs up if you like the channel. Spread the word. Leave a comment because I really do. I do. I go through the comments and I must have been in just a, I'm, I'm not going to be bothered. And I was, I was thanking people. Um, a woman said, I'm, I'm looking up your nose. I'm, look, I'm, tr I'm in here by myself. <laughs> and I, I am not, I'm a, I'm a radio announcer. This is all new. So I'm, so I'm pivoting. So just pivot. 
with Auntie a little bit, but I did. I just went through all the, the comments and had a chance to speak with many of you. So thank you because I appreciate it. It's not cute not knowing. And now you know. Thanks for joining me. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your Auntie of Pop Culture.